Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, we're still talking about design right now. I'm going to try to make this drawing lesson quick. I hope you spend more time on it and I hope you get a better idea of what a character design is. Um, talking about design for characters as well as props as well as backgrounds. Um, backgrounds are more towards a layout stage but it all depends on how your studio works. So, uh, characters. Um, you can search online, you could Google anime character designs and you'll come up with lots of character sheets. You'll come up with uh, lots of images that you can uh, be inspired by or just see how they are laid out on the page themselves. There's not much composition that goes into character design that's all for layout and storyboards and of course the animation. So we're gonna jump into uh, drawing on the screen and I'll switch over and I'll see you soon. Hi everybody, um, welcome back. Um, I just wanna show you how big my canvas is in Sketchbook Pro 6. Um, I have my width at 13 inches and my height at 10 inches and my resolution at 300. The reason I have it like this is because I would sometimes take my drawings, my layouts, if I create it in, Story in Sketchbook Pro, and I would print them out onto 12F paper, 12 field paper size. So that's the reason why I have my canvas so big because it, and when I print out at this size it prints out the exact size of my drawing onto the 12F paper. And if you don't know what 12F paper is, it's animation paper. I use Acme punched paper. It's the paper um, similar to the one that I showed you in the layout, um, the layout file that we did in the early lesson, in the earlier lesson, sorry. So that's uh, what acne paper is. It's uh, two oblong pegs with a circular peg in the middle. So you can keep your registration and keep all your papers in, in line more or less. So right now, Looking at this, I'm not too sure if this is the exact size. So I'm gonna click a new file and yeah, that's that might be the same. Okay. <laughs> so right now what you wanna do is you wanna color your your background a gray color. The reason we use gray when we're drawing is because white is too it's too bright, it's too harsh on our eyes, it gets us fatigued really fast and that's why we don't use white and especially we don't use super white which is uh, extra white. Um, in Sketchbook Pro 6, we have Coptic colors, which are akin to the real Coptic markers and co Coptic pens. Um, they don't have super white here. They have a double zero cool white and a zero gray, I'm sorry, cool gray number double zero and a cool gray number zero. Um, those aren't super white. But actually, I think they are super white. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but that is super white right there. And this is the cool gray number double zero. It's not super white. 
but it's uh, egg eggshell white. So you don't want to use that. You want to use a gray, a light gray, so our eyes don't get fatigued while staring at a screen. That's why most design softwares have gray backgrounds. So you're one, not distracted by bright colors, and two, so you don't get fatigued really fast. That's why we have the gray on design software. And we use a light gray so it doesn't match the background and we don't get like uh, mixed up where our canvas is. So we want to choose uh, a light blue akin to a coal erase. A coal erase is a animation pencil. It's a is a design pencil also. And whenever we're working with layers, we want to lock all our other layers except for the one that we are working on. So you want to lock your layers so you aren't drawing on that layer underneath. Uh, still talking about design. All right, so <clears throat> I just added two uh, two pictures on to my layers, and uh, I want to show you about sizes of uh, different, I guess, uh, typical anime or manga sizes, meaning like head sizes, how many heads for each uh, certain size character. So right here is a an illustration. Uh, I found this online. It was on a I think it was on like um, two channel or something like that, which is a Japanese BBS. Um, I'm not too sure the origin of this image, but this is a this is you know typical manga and anime sizes. You will see. From a, a chibi or a, a child size to older child, you know, and it goes on and on and on. And this last one looks like an Amazon, so I'm not too sure uh, what that's about. So, the person who ever created this image, they were nice enough to put each head size. And that's what these lines are right here. It's how many heads each character is. So that's a head. From the neck to under the breast is a head. From under the breast to her waist is a head. From her waist to her upper thigh, etc., etc. That's how we measure different characters. I'm sorry, that's how we measure our characters. So these are the numbers for the head sizes of how many heads each character is. So if I superimpose a picture of, let's say, Jennifer Lawrence, you can see that it's um, relatively accurate. Um, the elbows are cocked back and she's in a three-fourth stand here and her center of gravity is here. The center of gravity would be here, and where her heel is would be somewhere back there. So it's it's close. The elbows might be a little off. Her Jennifer Lawrence's arms might be longer in real life. We're dealing in cartoons here, so unless you're doing realistic drawings, uh, you don't need to be concerned 100% of the time with proportions, even though you should know anatomy. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, you should uh, learn anatomy, take anatomy classes if you need to, get anatomy books or go on Pinterest and find images of anatomy 
and animal anatomy and uh, not necessarily copy or trace but learn from them because the animal kingdom doesn't really vary in size unless it's a kind of a freakish a new breed or something I don't know what I'm talking about but learn anatomy I'm not the greatest at anatomy but I'm not always trying to do something realistic so we'll just start drawing a character um, our two characters right now that I have for manga on a string is uh, the old shopkeeper I'm not too sold on how he looks it was a real quick drawing in the, in the first lesson and in this lesson I just want to get through it kind of quickly I, uh, you don't really want to rush all the time but you want to take your time when you're doing design I'm not too sure how long they uh, have the design process to give uh, the design stage in anime. I'll try to find that information out for you. But I'm assuming it's really not that long. I don't think they take years to develop these characters. And since especially these lots of uh, characters come from manga or other illustrated books, they are usually have a good base idea of what the character should look like because if you look at the Sailor Moon manga it's similar to the original animated uh, Sailor Moon television show the new Sailor Moon Crystal I think might be a little bit more accurate to how the manga looked so they already have an idea of what the characters should look like you right now might not have that reference since uh, you're creating your own your own storylines but at the end of blast at the end of the last video I showed you a comparison that someone did online of different anime characters and how they look almost like doppelgangers to other characters who came before them it's not unlikely to have similar characters than that, that already exist, but um, yeah, just just keep designing and be inspired by others. You're standing on their shoulders, shoulders of giants, and I'll just, right now I'm just gonna set up how many heads tall this character might be. If I was going to use this chart, uh, the character I want to draw would probably be here. I don't know, a young woman, I guess. So she would be uh, seven and a half feet tall. The reason I say half is because her heel is back here, and that's usually where I, where I determine how tall they're going to be is uh, the ground and this is not the ground it appears that they're standing on their tippy toes or they're wearing high heels so this uh, illustration kind of looks like it's happening so six and a half feet tall I'm sorry six and a half heads tall So I'm going to draw this size character and when you're drawing you don't want to draw too small because if you're drawing this big you're going to be hard pressed to make a decent sized drawing. So when you blow it up, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be very wonky, and you don't want that. 
you don't want to draw super, super small. Um, depending on your screen size or your paper size, you want to fit your character within that paper size, but you don't want to draw really tiny. Because I used to draw really tiny when I was younger. And I write really small too. So I got used to the habit of little things. Like I used to write really small. But these days, I write bigger, I guess. <laughs> So you want to draw relatively big so you can see what you're drawing and as well as you want to make sure that you can see your detail. I'm just going to use this size comparison chart as a reference. I don't really want to uh, copy the character. But I'll just use the size comparison as a reference. So when I fill in my detail, I'm not sitting here um, fighting with myself trying to figure out what size a character is. And in the first lesson, I was talking about framing. And the reason I did the gray, and I made the gray. Well, the reason I did this gray background and framing is a uh, program itself already has a frame that's gray. It's the darker gray behind this gray of the canvas. So this dark gray back here is allowing me to have this gray as a frame. So you do want to start with a frame when you're drawing so you're not super lost. You're not staring at a, a blank screen entirely. You have a frame for reference. And I do uh, sketchy type of drawings these days. I don't try to finish, have finished line work when I start. And if you don't know what that means, I mean, I'm not trying to draw like this and have a finished character. right from the start. Um, I, do <laughs> I sketch draw and then later on I'll tighten up the character so lots of my sketches have lots of little lines and it's just I'm trying to figure out where every line should be So when I go to clean up, I can pick out the line that I like, and the line that makes sense to me. I'm also not worried about color right now. I'm drawing in blue right now because I'm drawing on a Cintiq, and drawing gray on gray kind of gets lost sometimes. So. That's why um, I use blue. I use blue a lot when I'm animating as well. The color blue. And I'm not really concerned about details at this moment.
I just want to find her shape. And what you also want to be concerned about when you're designing is weight. Portions. So you don't want this middle calf to be down here. You want to keep everything roughly the same. And don't try not to get stuck on a Try not to get stuck on one part. And if you need to, start drawing lines. So everything matches up. So our knees will be here. Then make an upper calf here. The lower calf roughly there. So what I mean is um, you want to keep, let's say for instance, this thigh the same size as that thigh, or the size of this arm the same size of this forearm. You want to keep them the same size so it's consistent and things don't look lopsided. I'm not concerned right now with her pose. I'm just trying to get a a feel for the character. Just a, her base size. I would draw a circle from the top of her head to her waist. That will determine where her elbows are at. Because if you raise your arm above your head, your elbow should be aligned with the top of your head if your arms are relatively uh, even. Now, that is a, uh, that's what I have, and this is totally not the way that I would design normally. I would usually spend lots and lots of time figuring out these characters, but for this video, I'm trying to, uh, trying to kind of rush through it. So I'm going to start another layer and lock this layer, maybe even turn down the opacity. So all I have for right now, our shape is a base. I would change my color, something maybe a little darker. And I'll start thinking about our design. Uh, right now I'm not using any references. 
I would usually use at least a costume reference if I could find something that I liked beforehand before I started designing. But right now, I'm. this is all just off the top of my head. Um, I'm not too concerned if they're, they're closed right now. Um, lots of my characters start off, you know, nude, because I think we all start off nude. And uh, I do know I want to give her relatively big eyes. And a little bit of the nose. See, so that's what I'm talking about by drawing small. My canvas is only at 50% right now. And how's there drawing really, really small? I'm gonna zoom way in. And start again. I wanna give her a A pointy chin. Hmm. She's a bit has her head cocked a little to the side. It's um must be the, the place I'm sitting, so I can see both my screens as I'm recording this. So she's. Make sure that she's a uh, stays in line. And uh, you design your characters the way you want to design them. Uh, try not to allow someone to dictate to you how your characters should look. Like I was saying in the first video. Um, there's so many different styles and ways a character can look. If you ever watch uh, Shin Chan, for instance, sometimes they do fantasy sequences where they break into a quasi action scene and the characters become very uh, heroic, Western comic book looking. And they turn into, into heroes, or superheroes, more or less. And, uh, it's like a fantasy sequence, or like, uh, something just to break up the monotony of the way they, they usually look, with their limited lines, and, I don't know, very artistic, uh, design in Shin Chan. But... There's lots of ways to draw characters. You know, characters in Rama one half don't look like characters in Shin Chan. Characters in Shin Chan don't look like the the characters in like Redline, the OVA. They don't look like anything out of Akira. So there's lots of different ways you can design and it's all up to you to find that voice and to find that look of your characters.